Hey guys, DIY Dallin here. We're out in the shop. Today we're working on a uh, good friend's Mitsubishi. Uh, the shop said it was going to take $500 to fix his fuel pump. And, you know, uh, a lot of these Japanese cars, Mitsubishi, Nissan, Honda, Acura, they all use the same fuel pump and the same FSU, fuel sending unit. And I have that FSU right here. It's really easy to get at. You just remove the back seat of the car. I'll take some pictures and show you guys. And then it's a few connectors you just gotta undo and you can get the FSU out. This is a really quick video, by the way. I'm not gonna get my gimbal, so it's gonna be a little shaky, sorry. Anyway, you can spend $300 on the whole FSU, which is your fuel meter gauge. That's what this little lever is, the float on it. It is just a potentiometer going into the top. There's an electrical connector at the top. There's a vent. But they want to charge you $300 for this little guy. Your fuel pump went out. You look these up on Amazon, they're 20 bucks, guys. And they're really easy to get at. So let me show you what to do. Is you take, there's the sock on the bottom of the fuel pump. It has a little snap ring, a little retainer ring right here. Let's see if I can get it to focus. Put a screwdriver underneath this ring that sits right there on the fuel sock. And then it will allow you to remove this whole rubber piece off the bottom. Before that even, there's this little plastic clip and you can see there's clip one, clip two, and clip three. Be gentle with it, plastic that's old is usually a little brittle. And then all you do is disconnect the old fuel pump. There's a connector at the top. This guy goes in to the top of the FSU, right inside of there, you'll see the unpopulated socket right there. So this connector was in there, I just removed it. I cut the wires on the old fuel pump because my new fuel pump for $20 has a connector on it instead of the screw terminals. Sweet. So anyway, I just soldered the positive, positive, negative, negative from the old harness on this side to the new harness, the new harness on this side. And then all you do is put a screwdriver on top of the fuel pump right where my fingers are and slides right out. It's just a nice little press fit. So let's put the new fuel pump in. Since I have the connector all ready to go. Boom, it's in. Oh my gosh, $300 and $200 labor for that. Let me show you guys how easy it was just to pull the seat out of the car. Cause some people are ridiculous. Oh, the four wheeler project's coming along nice. That engine and that. Here's this guy's Mitsubishi. So there's a seat, plastic clips right there. All you do is you pull up firmly on the seat and it unlatches for Mitsubishi. Hondas have a little ring right there. They have a loop that you have to pull on in order to get the seat to release. Get a little bit of foam out of your way. Show you guys down inside the tank. I use the shop back to clean up all the dirt and crap. Anyway, these are all the top connections. This is fuel pressure, not fuel pressure, sorry. Vapor pressure, fuel vapor pressure sensor. And I undo it from the top, otherwise it makes getting the slip ring undone a pain. Four screws, one, two, three, four. They're bright green. And there's two, four, six, eight millimeter bolts that hold this ring in that hold the FSU down inside the tank. Pull that out, pull your old fuel pump out, swap the $20 part, and you're good to go. I've done this on a lot of my vehicles that it on this Nissan Pathfinder. It's a good little trick, guys. You know what, guys? I'm a giver. I'm going to videotape me putting this fuel pump assembly back together just because of how easy it is. So let's put this rubber isolator back in. Where it was. Up on top. We are going to pull the sock fitting off the top. And this one, when I did my Nissan, it came with the wrong sock. This one looks like it came with the right sock. It comes with multiple socks. Just toss the ones that you don't want. So we're gonna put the sock, and it comes with a new snap ring as well, so you don't have to worry about 
bending or breaking the old one on your old fuel pump. So we're gonna put the sock back on. It has a nice little fit, just wiggle it gently. I still can't believe shops are willing to charge people that much for the extra 10 minutes of work. You know what I mean? So now I'm pushing the snap ring on. I'm gonna show you guys close up of that. It can be a little tricky. So I got my sock on. It is nice and seated, nice and flush. And then there's my ring. I'm just gonna push on the outer edge with a screwdriver and get that on. Usually, like I said, I use my gimbal to stabilize the video and everything. But this is just a quick one. I didn't wanna, I found that when I make all these how-to videos, it usually costs me a lot of time. And it's not even the time of the project, it's the time to set up the camera, think about what I'm gonna say, stutter a bit, blah, blah, blah. And by the time I'm done with everything, uh, it took me twice as long as it should have. But this is such a simple fix. So, just going around that ring and pushing it down. Just take your time with the little flathead screwdriver. My dogs are barking. Rubber goes down and we'll put this top cap back on. It'll snap back into place. Done. Hey, look. I have a new fuel pump ready to go. I've already soldered my wires, so we'll plug this into the fuel pump. Camera. And then we're just gonna run this wire inside of it. And uh, come on in. It's just a quick little how-to video. It's nothing professional by any means. I just figured this is such a simple one. Why not, you know? No, I did this bass backwards. If I plug it into the FSU first, it'd be much easier since that connector is harder to get to. So let's drop the wires down and in. <coughs> I don't know if you knew I made a YouTube channel. Well, I've started videotaping a lot of my home DIY stuff. Yeah, because all the crap I end up doing is so unique and custom, and everyone's always like, how did you do that? Actually, no one's like that. I'm doing it more for posterity. So yeah, put the top connector in first. You do need to be careful with the float, guys. Don't rip it off. Hey, it's all connected now. Now we're ready to put the FSU back in. This will just sit down in the fuel tank. You have to wiggle your way in so that you don't hit the float too hard. Goes in at a sideways angle. Rotate it to the original position that it was in. Put your ring back on, your four screws, six bolts, your seat back in. Just push it in firmly and it will seat. And you're done. There's your $500 fuel pump change from any auto parts place. Or you can do it for $20.00. I have used in this project shot vac, flathead screwdriver, pair of uh, pipe pliers. I don't know what they're really called. They're small channel locks is what they are because they're wide. These guys right here. Just undo those. Um, flathead screwdriver, soldering iron, a little solder, a little heat shrink. And this was under 30 minutes. Have a good one.